For many years, the spirit bearer was considered a legend of the Gitgat and Kittisoo native peoples. Their legends told of a time when the glaciers finally receded and it was Raven who made everything green. Raven also decided to make one in ten black bears white, to remind him of the time when the world was white with snow and ice. Raven decided to set aside a special area of the world for these bears, now known as the Great Bear Rainforest along the Pacific West Coast of Canada. It was a remote paradise where the bears were to live in peace forever. The Great Bear Rainforest is pristine rainforest with valleys covered in lush foliage, hemlock, cedar, and ancient Sitka spruce. Packs of wolves roam freely and hunt the many deer in the forest. Porpoises, seals, orcas, and humpback whales inhabit the channels and coves around this rainforest. In many ways, the Great Bear Rainforest strongly resembles the paradise that Raven had meant it to be. However, hunting and the fish farming industries are endangering the spirit bear. The spirit bear also known as the Kermode bear, only lives in British Columbia's Great Bear Rainforest. This bear is not related to the polar bear, nor is it an albino. It is a black bear with a recessive gene that causes about 1 in 10 bears to be white. Families of these bears can consist of both white and black bears. The territory of the spirit bear is about 7.2 million hectares. They exist in the territory from Princess Royal Island to Prince Rupert Island, Terraced, and East Hazelton. Most of the world's spirit bears are found on Princess Royal Island. The island is also home to salmon, bald eagles, foxes, and other animals. Spirit bears are strong and easygoing. They can easily protect themselves from other animals, and they make an effort to avoid lynx, grizzlies, mountain lions, as well as humans. Their number one enemy is man. The spirit bears survived the ice age, but today there are only a few hundred left in the world. This subspecies of the black bear is clearly in danger of extinction. While the white bears themselves are protected from hunting, the black bears in the same rainforests are not and when one of the black bears is killed for a trophy on someone's wall or floor, the special recessive genes that help create the raven spirit bears dies along with the black bear. A further threat to the spirit bear comes from the numerous fish farms seemingly spreading like chickweed throughout the channels and inlets that surround the Great Bear Rainforest. These commercial farms produce Atlantic salmon, a species obviously not native to the Pacific west coast of Canada. The high concentration of fish in the fish farm nets leads to severe problems with sea lice. While many wild fish will naturally have a few lice living on their bodies, the locations of the fish farms with their close proximity to the natural spawning creeks and rivers of the wild salmon means that the young, freshly hatched wild fry must swim through heavily lice-infested waters where their small bodies can quickly and completely be overwhelmed with lice, thereby killing the fry. In the present year of 2009, the salmon counts are desperately low, leading to low numbers of bears, including spirit, black, and grizzly bears, fishing the rivers. The bears heavily rely on the nutrition and fat from the salmon to survive their winter hibernation. The wild salmon are the linchpin of the entire rainforest ecosystem. From wolves to bears and even the forest itself, all these natural systems rely on the nutrition of the wild salmon to survive. Every European country that has introduced fish farming has seen their natural wild salmon stocks collapse. When you next consider purchasing fish for dinner or even at a restaurant, you can really help the spirit bear and the other wildlife in the Great Bear Rainforest by only purchasing wild and not farm fish. If you'd like to help make a difference, 
consider writing to the Premier of British Columbia or the Minister of Forests and Range for British Columbia. You also might want to consider supporting an organization called Pacific Wild. Pacific Wild is an environmental organization run by Ian McAllister, whose mission is to research and find ways to help protect this incredibly special area of the world.